What's up, everybody? It's Fireplace Friday, and I'm Jeremy, your host uh, from the Fluge Brothers World Headquarters. Uh, what's going on right now? Well, over the last week, I want to go over two things today. Um, over the last week, uh, it's like Labor Day hits every year, and it's funny because I've uh, told people, you know, all businesses are a little seasonal, and you can just you can just literally write on the calendar, this is when the season starts, this is when the season ends, and you're usually pretty darn close within a couple weeks. Um, Labor Day, <clears throat> it's like a switch turns. Right up to Labor Day, we're usually pretty slow, phones are a little slow, people are getting back from um, vacations, people are getting their kids back to school. I know we had to drop our son off at college and then my daughter started school like a week later. And uh, so that's a, that's a busy time trying to get everything ready, trying to get, you know, all the school supplies and things like that. But it also, once that Labor Day hits and everybody's kind of settled in for the winter, that's when the phone starts going crazy. So just like every year, we're going to talk about uh, let's get called if you want to get your chimney done before the holidays because uh, our first holiday is going to be Thanksgiving. So everybody's going to want to have their chimney done before that. That's my phone ringing. And then the um, right after that is Christmas. So a lot of people, you know, um, try to get their stuff in ASAP. And as you can hear, if my phone's ringing, that means all the other phones are ringing and it looks like we're good. So, um, so definitely, definitely, definitely go ahead and uh, get the calls in, get it, uh, get your service set up for the, uh, for the winter. Um, if you want to get it done before the holidays, call sooner than later. Also with repair, same thing. A lot of people like to think about it and procrastinate and all this other stuff, but um, the fact is, is if your house it has never had any chimney work done on it, um, you should be really concerned about getting a proper inspection uh, and see what's going on with it. Uh, a house that's you know 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years old and has never had any chimney work done on it, it's kind of silly to think that anything that's 20, 30, 40, 100 years old uh, that's never had any service, never had any work done, it's going to be in tip-top shape. So um, it's a matter of maintenance and see what all's going on with it. That starts with an inspection and then, uh, you know, when we come out. So what do you want to do? So I'm the homeowner and I go, hey, I want to have my chimney checked out. I'm going to do the responsible thing, maintain my home, and I need to have it checked out. So how do you choose a contractor? And this applies not only to chimneys, it applies to plumbers, electricians, everything. First off, um, how do I find that person? Well, I always tell people, you know, I like to ask friends and family um, or, even, uh, you know, have you used a certain service or whatever? Did you have a good experience with them? How were they with you, et cetera? Um, I sometimes get mixed reviews with that stuff. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll sometimes do a Google search and I look at reviews. I look at, you know, do they have a website that actually works? Um, if I call them, do they have someone that answers the phone? Now, if they have a high volume of calls right now, I get it if I got to leave a message, but most of the time when you call, the phone should be answered. Now, think about that though. If they didn't answer the phone, why? Well, it could be that it's very busy into their season and I'm calling over my lunch break or I'm calling after I get off work, uh, and or I'm calling first verse first thing in the morning. Now those three times are the most popular times for people to call. So the call volume goes up a lot. Um, so it might be that they're on another line or what have you. But most of the time, um, a, a good professional service will answer their phones. Um, and when they answer their phone, is it a polite, um, upbeat person or is it a hello? I always love that when I call somebody and I get a hello. Well, it's nice that they said hello, but that isn't exactly a professional way to answer your phones. Uh, it should be like here. It's, uh, hi, thanks for calling Fluge Brothers Chimney Service. This is blank. How can I help you? Something of that nature. Um, and then is that person knowledgeable? Uh, they answer the phone. Are they knowledgeable? Um, basically, most of the time, they cannot sur solve your problem over the phone. They can't give you a lot of pricing. They can't you know, estimate your project of that, of that nature, you're calling to set up a service call, uh, an appointment to get someone out to the house. Now, most trades do have a charge for that. There are some trades that still do, you know, free estimates, but that's typically a direct selling point. So you're roofing. Okay. 
It's not, do I need a roof inspection? I know I need a new roof. So that's direct. I know what I need. Um, siding, same thing. I know what I need. I don't need someone to figure out a problem and I don't need to know what's going on. I, I have a direct, I want this replaced. So that's typically not what we get here. Um, we'll get close, we'll get um, people that uh, just bought their home and they'll go, well, I've already had an inspection. Well, I'm here to tell you who, who inspected it. We usually ask and they'll go, well, the home inspector. Well, a home inspector has limitations to their inspection. If you read your inspection report and stop looking at just the summary page, if you actually go to that section and look under certain things, they'll recommend getting a professional out there, getting an expert out there, because they should. you should know every point. The inside of the chimney is just as important as the few things I can see on the outside. And we had one that called up and we end up going out and everything and then they end up only wanting what the home inspector uh had found even though we did a full inspection and found a lot of other things that needed that had, hadn't been maintained or delayed maintenance as my bank said the other day uh deferred maintenance something weird story basically i've never had anything done on this been most of the time people don't know they need to have things done on it um but uh they still ended up only getting tuck pointing done and i was looking at the job today and we've got all the scaffold up and we're and we've done the tuck pointing and their chimney caps rusted and that's not good. It's probably going to fail. And their um, crown, which is the part right under um, that tops off the chimney, right under the cap, is all cracked up and everything. I guess the guys, I go, well, are we not doing anything to that? And they said, no, they didn't want it done. They just wanted what the home inspector had found. Well, come to find out the home inspector was looking from the ground because they didn't get up there and they didn't look at the very top. So... I think in their mind, they they think, okay, well, someone else said this, that sounds more attractive than the facts or reality, so we're just going to get that done for now, and that'll solve everything, blah, blah, and it, and it doesn't. Um, that's why we take photos, um, so that's another thing. Um, the company that's coming out, not only do they answer their phones, or the company you're dealing with, not only do they answer their phones, they answer it professionally, you've got a knowledgeable person answering the phone. Um, but they have a structured, they have a structured service and when they come out, um, is the technician, uh, <laughs> properly dressed. That's a fun one. I, I was looking, uh, uh, at a contractor that was working on a house and, uh, they were putting up guttering and they were wearing, uh, uh, torn up concert t-shirts, beer t-shirts and, uh, ripped or, uh, cut off, uh, sweatpants. I know you're comfortable, but that's not really a professional look. So, um, you know, we try to keep our guys comfy. We let them choose the pants as long as the pants are a, a uh, you know, something workable, not cut off sweatpants or gym shorts or something like that. You know, those are lounge wear and things that have functional. But, but for construction, you want, you know, proper construction gear. You want some good work boots or some good tennis shoes, depending on what you're doing. And we, uh, our guys like uh, hoodies and um, t-shirts. They feel most comfortable. They're logoed. They have everything on them. I don't have one on right now because I came directly to work from another place. Um, but I'll have to put on what what Ellen Rohr in the industry, which is an industry speaker, calls the costume. So I got to put my costume on. But are they professionally dressed? They pull up in a professional vehicle, not some you know broken down thing. Uh, are they knowledgeable, uh, the technicians? So within this industry, there are certifications. Uh, so you obviously want a certified, tested person that is knowledgeable about it. Also, um, do they do the report on site and estimates on site? If I need repairs, are they going to give me an estimate on the site or am I going to have to chase that person? Hopefully they got my email right. Hopefully I get my paperwork. Hopefully this and that. Um, and because I've noticed a lot of companies, I still can't believe to this day that even Nash, nationwide known companies, which I kind of might have griped about this last week, we had them, we had a national company uh, owned by one of the richest people on earth uh, <laughs> come come out and um, look at our and look at our uh, uh, countertops. 
and I never heard back from them. They couldn't do an estimate on site, which I'm kind of surprised. Why can't you do an estimate on site? We always do our estimates on site because we know we've done this enough. We've scaled the business enough. It's not special. There's a rare occasion where we got to send one after the fact, but it's not very often. Usually it's a, it's a very weird, weird, weird event in that, which can happen because these chimneys are built by, you know, humans. So anyways, uh, are they going to give me my paperwork and my estimate on site or email it to me on site so I don't have to wait and go over it with me and I know what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. So are they pretty turnkey or the easy to do business with? Uh, do they apply the inspection towards repairs over a certain amount of money? That's also a nice thing because then you end up getting a free inspection, right? If you're going to invest in that, then, um, you know, whatever would work financially for the company, which is nice. Like I had a plumber out and they charge a service call to come out and then they apply it towards any work over a certain amount, which most plumbing work is over a certain amount. You have to be reasonable. I'm not going to get something done for a hundred bucks. Uh, inflation, 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 you know, parts cost money and it costs money to run that truck. Gas, it costs more money. Um, everything costs more right now, unfortunately. We'll get over it. We'll get through it. Um, and, and I, I'm a consumer as well. People tend to forget we're, we're homeowners and consumers and I use services and everything. It's just part of it. Everything's a little bit more expensive with inflation, but that happens over time. Um, and then it usually levels out. So uh, the uh, next thing on it is uh, they give that, do, the, do they give pictures so I can see what's going on? Even if I might not understand some of the photos, they'll get explained to me and I've got proof of what's going on. So um, do they do reports? Do they provide pictures? We put pictures in the reports. It makes it easier for everybody to read. Um, that way you can look over everything and not just look at a summary page and just go off of that. You want you want to see what's going on. You want to be active in how that's being done or any repairs that are being done because you want to make sure, do they take pictures when, when they do the repairs so I can see what repairs they did because it's way up there you know, most of the time. Um, and uh, we, we're very, we, our company is very transparent when it comes to stuff. Um, that, uh, yeah, uh, our Darius, uh, they love the pictures for sure. Absolutely. Who doesn't, who doesn't like to see that? I mean, even when you go to the doctor and you broke a bone, they throw that up there. You don't know what you're looking at. Oh yes, I see. I see that. You don't know what you're really looking at, but it's proof and, and it helps explain things. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for transparency. We're looking for honesty. We don't send out salesmen. We send out technicians. Um, you know, salesmen, sales, sales and salesmen have always been viewed as, oh, they're scrungy and they're going to tell you what you want to hear and things. Well, that's the thing with a free estimate um, for what we were talking about, the, you know, uh, siding, roofing, things of that nature when you know you need a replacement. I hear this all the time from people. Well, the salesman they sent out said this, that, this, that, this, that, and then it didn't happen. Well, you've got to make sure you get it in writing on the, on the, on the final form and make sure it's all lined out. And if it's not lined out, don't go off of some verbal conversation. Um, go off of, Hey, let's get it in there and make sure it's all agreed upon. So you, both you and me know what's going on in this transaction and we don't have any arguments or problems afterwards because that just takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of emotion, and that, that isn't good for either party. So, so you want to make sure, uh, also, uh, when you're going through things, if you're calling multiple people or multiple companies, cause you, you're not sure who to go with. Find out what how they do the process. Find out what credentials they have. Find out are they do they um, use employees? If they do, which most most companies do, are they background checked and um, and uh, uh, drug screened? You know, uh, what kind of person do you want at your house? Uh, a lot of companies we're finding as we're hiring people, uh, we're finding a lot of people that are coming to work here have never been background screened, never been drug tested. And they've been doing work inside people's houses for years and years. Uh, you kind of want that stuff vetted a little bit, you know. We need to know what we're up against. I, I don't want somebody with a shady history in my house, uh, you know, around my kids and things like that, working on my stuff. You know, who knows? Did they rob a bank last week? Uh, you know, what have you. Uh, it is nice to know that, at least peace of mind, because most of our customers are female um, you know, and it's, it's the technician and, uh, and that person, whether it be, 
you know, whoever it be in the house there during that time. So we want to make sure that those people feel comfortable with us and that we're making friends with them. They know that we're here in their benefit, not just to take advantage of something or what have you and do a good job. So that's another great question to ask, making sure that they have uh, liability insurance. That way, if somebody gets hurt on your property, um, they're covered workman's comp, they're covered rather than your homeowner's insurance, because I've talked about it before. People will say, well, I'm not going to pay for that. It does, you don't get the choice. Uh, if, if, if you have somebody working on your house and they get hurt and they don't have their own coverage on liability insurance and workman's comp, um, uh, then your homeowner's insurance will end up having to dow out for that, which is not cool. That's not cool at all. Hopefully no one gets hurt, period. But if it does happen, we want to make sure that we're covered properly. Also, another thing that runs into is, is if you're doing, if you're having repair work done, are they collecting a deposit so they can purchase the material with the, with that money? It's your your project, your your house, your money um, to avoid any problems with suppliers or God forbid subcontractors. You know how I feel about subcontractors and oh the headaches and the messes. Um, but that's why we have everybody in house here. Um, but you don't want a supplier or subcontractor, you know, fencing, flooring, all those guys use subcontractors. Uh, you don't want them coming, coming to you and saying, Hey, I never got paid by this person, the salesman you gave a deposit to, and, or the job wasn't done the whole way. And, and they're not communicating. All this stuff is very real. Uh, take my word for it. It's happened to us and I've heard it happens to customers all the time. So you want to make sure you're using a good valid company for that. Um, and make sure everything's you know a good a good fit. A lot of people just simply base everything on price. What was the experience through the whole uh, process when I called? Were they responsive? Did they give me some deadlines and timelines? You know, is everything fit in the boxes? Um, of course, price is always important, but with those other things, the smoothness and everything, you're going to pay probably a little bit more for that service, but it's like going to a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant and you want nice things at the restaurant, a little nicer menu and stuff, you're going to pay a little bit more. And that is relative to a lot of people because I know a lot of people eat out and, and it can boil all the way down to fast food. Um, yes, you can go to uh, McDonald's and get a little chicken sandwich and it's okay. It'll nourish you and you're off to the races you're probably going to pay a little bit more and get a lot better service uh, at Chick-fil-A, right? Uh, a lot of people love Chick-fil-A. I watch a line out the door every time we go. Everybody's very kind. They're staffed well. Um, they provide a good product. It's They don't sell 80 things. It's very, hey, we've got um, breaded chicken or what they call naked chicken, which is just you know ch uh, grilled chicken breast. So it's very easy to make decisions. It's very good service. They know their product well. That's kind of how we try to run things around here with that mindset um, uh, of, okay, you know, we want to scale our stuff so we, we don't do everything. You know, we get calls here. I had a call the other day and, and we referred uh, a fireplace shop to them because they wanted a, a new freestanding wood stove with pipe and everything. And we, we don't get enough of that. Um, business. We do a lot of inserts uh, into existing fireplaces, change out things like that, but we just don't do enough freestanding wood stoves for me to retrain all the guys and everything. Now, do we service them, clean them? Absolutely. Repair them? Yes, absolutely. But uh, selling one to a customer where the customer would come in, take a look at it, look at the features and everything, we don't sell enough of them for me to have them here in stock. Um, so uh, we pass to a company that does have them in stock and probably doesn't do a lot of them, but does enough of them to where they have them on their showroom floor. So we're helping the customer. I didn't make any money off of them, but he'll remember us for service and things of that nature or other repairs he might need done on his chimney. So that's, that's providing a good service. We were able to give him a referral uh, for the need he had because we don't provide that particular service. So, um, so we're very good at scaling that down so we can get in, get out, get you served, um, no headaches on your side, jobs done, jobs done well, 
thumbs up. So that's what you're looking for at the end of the day, or at least I am, because I don't want to deal with all the extras that come into it. I don't want to spend my hours uh, on inferior things and stuff like that. So when you're shopping or comparing, realize that if someone's charging half of what another person is, it isn't just that person trying to rip me off. It's why? Why are they charging that? Why are they half the price? Is it too good to be true? Does that other company, um, uh, you know, do all these things that we're talking about? And then when I called the company that's half the price, did I get a live person on the phone? Were they knowledgeable? Uh, did they answer the phone? Hello? When did they get back with me? And, you know, and, and what did they show up? How did they work? You know, things of that nature. So, that's always very important. At least, like I said, it's important to enough people to where it's a good service to provide that. And, you know, up in your game as a company owner saying, okay, we're going to provide this level of service. Now, how much do we have to charge to be able to char to provide that level of service? Because it's just like any industry, anything, you know, you can go to the cheapest uh, plastic surgeon or you can go to the most expensive plastic surgeon. You can go to the, uh, uh, you can go to... Uh, a cheap steakhouse, uh, or you can go to the most expensive steakhouse. Uh, you're probably going to have different experiences of those, and you're going to have a different quality at each one of them, and uh, you're probably going to feel that you spent your money well at whichever one of them, depending on what kind of a purchase you purchases you purchase you er <laughs> you are. But um, so. The, the two things I wanted to throw off is uh, today is, is uh, how to hire a good company. Uh, you know, it always helps, too, if that company is a, a well-run company um, and making sure that everything's in, in place on that. And also um, getting over the, the illusion that when you buy a house that the home inspector has done a thorough inspection on every single thing in that house. We've talked about it before. You need to not just look at the summary page. You need to look at the actual report. They're going to have pictures in it, depending on the home inspector, of course. Uh, but it's pretty common. They're going to have pictures, and they're going to have um, proof, and they're going to have uh, wording, and then they're going to have disclaimers on how far their inspection went or what's going on. So many people use that summary form, and they don't even look at the rest of it, which is just silly. You need to look into that. You need to see what you actually need to do because a lot of times there's some language in there that says, you know, we recommend having a professional certified company come out and check the whole chimney, water heater, whatever trade you're looking at um, because they're just get, catching a snapshot and they just notice something is a little wrong. They don't get into the deep, dark testing uh, uh, or knowledge base of what is going on with that. So don't be disillusioned with that. Make sure you're having the full thing checked out, whether it be your chimney, whether it be your electrical panel, whether it be, um, you know, the pool, anything. Uh, buy a professional, pay for the inspection, get it inspected. You know, again, the home inspector is going to come in kind of like your general practitioner doctor. And a general practitioner doctor might do a health check on you and say, hey, you've got a mole on your back and it looks a little funny. I'm going to recommend you call a dermatologist or a skin expert of some form uh, to go to them because he isn't a skin expert. He is a general practitioner, which um, is great. And they're there, but that's the next step. Get a, get a professional. So, um, so there you go. Uh, uh, our Darius says most don't even get on roofs in Southern Arkansas. That is, yeah, unfortunately there are, you don't always have to get up on a roof. There are other ways to inspect things, especially if it's very dangerous. Um, you know, there's uh, selfie sticks, uh, you know, uh, cameras on the end of poles and drones and things of that. You just want to make sure that that company that you're calling is properly equipped. We had a call the other day uh, from a customer saying that, uh, they had a chimney sweep out and uh, they weren't able to do the work that they were needing done. So that's why they were calling us. Um, and I know the company, it's a smaller company, you have a couple guys and they don't have the uh, resources that we have. So that's why the customer was calling us. Um, and that was one of the things customers said, well, they didn't get on the roof. Well, you don't always have to, depending on the equipment you have. That's why we take photos. Um, but at the same time, again, 
that company wasn't a good fit for what their needs were. So that's why they end up calling us and we get a lot of calls like that and that's fine. You know, we want to help out everybody. So anyways, uh, that's enough for today. Uh, we're going to have a good weekend. I think there's, uh, um, I'm going to be helping out a friend, uh, in a parade in, uh, Olathe tomorrow. I think it's old settlers days, I believe. So get out and enjoy the weather. Uh, get down there to Olathe, watch a parade, walk around. They always have vendors and street food and stuff like that. It's just a good time, uh, good time to get outside and enjoy the weather. And, uh, if you see me in the parade, uh, give me a wave. Uh, I'm, uh, I've got a, uh, a neat car that I'm driving for a friend, uh, in that parade. And, um, I get to drive around some political person that I haven't met yet. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we'll do some waving and, and, uh, representing for them. And, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Our Darius, if you uh, might come give us a holler and, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll meet up with you and have something deep fried. <laughs> That's usually what you get at carnivals and stuff like that. So have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next Friday uh, for Fireplace Friday.